हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज प्रतिमा एंड वेलकम बैक टू प्लैनेट फिजियोलॉजी अंडरस्टैंडिंग ब्लड ग्रुप्स इज क्रिटिकल फॉर एंश्योरिंग कंपैटिबिलिटी इन ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन एंड प्रिवेंटिंग एडवर्स ट्रांसफ्यूजन रिएक्शंस इट आल्सो प्लेज अ की रोल इन प्रिवेंटिंग डिसीजेस सच एज इरिथ्रोब्लास्टोसिस फिटालिस इट एड्स इन फॉरेंसिक मेडिसिन एंड आल्सो इन रिजॉल्विंग पैटर्निटी डिस्प्यूट्स therefore knowing one's blood group is fundamental and it's recommended that everyone is aware of their own blood type today we shall learn how to accurately determine blood group under the following headings principle of blood typing apparatus required details about the procedure how to accurately identify different blood groups precautions that must be taken during the procedure and at the end some must know viva questions on this topic so watch the entire video carefully till the end if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe it now okay let's begin karl landsteiner first discovered abo blood group system and later the rs system and based on his observation he concluded that there are specific blood group antigens on the surface of rbcs remember that blood group antigens are called as agglutinogens he classified the blood groups based on the presence or absence of agglutinogens if rbcs have agglutinogen a on their surface blood group is a here the blue triangles on the rbcs represent agglutinogen a if rbcs have agglutinogen b blood group is b if they have both a and b agglutinogens blood group is ab and if they neither have a nor b agglutinogen blood group is o similarly if rbcs have agglutinogen d blood group is rh positive and if they lack agglutinogen d blood group is rh negative with this background knowledge let's start the practical part to determine blood group of any individual we should find out which agglutinogens are present on the surface of rbcs from our knowledge of immunity we know that specific antibodies react with specific antigens hence to determine blood group the blood sample is mixed with the serum containing known antibody and checked for agglutination reaction presence of agglutination reaction indicates presence of that particular agglutinogen on the rbc so for this we require normal saline or citrated saline spirit cotton lancet a white tile a small test tube anti serum kit containing anti a anti b and anti d dropper and sticks these anti serums are color coded anti serum a is always blue in color it contains agglutinin a that is antibodies against agglutinogen a hence if the rbcs possess agglutinogen a these antibodies will react with them and will show agglutination reaction as rbcs get clumped to each other they can be easily visualized by the naked eye anti serum b is always yellow and has antibody b they react only with agglutinogen b anti serum d is transparent and has antibody d which reacts only with agglutinogen d let's start with the procedure first label the four quadrants of the tile as anti a anti b anti d and control or c instead of tile you can use glass slides or tile with depression so whichever method you are following is better to label them all then take about 1 ml of normal saline in the test tube and keep it aside if you are using tile with depression take the saline in the depression labeled s now apply spirit to the ring finger allow it to dry naturally then take a bold finger prick
Once a good size drop is formed, place the ring finger on the test tube rim containing saline in such a way that rim of the tube tightly fits around the blood drop. Place the thumb on the bottom of the tube and invert the tube for two or three times. This transfers the blood into the saline and our RBC suspension is ready. Note that we should use RBC suspension only and not the undiluted blood to prevent false positive results. Now on the tile, take one drop of antiserum A in the section labeled as anti A. Then one drop of anti B in the section labeled anti B and one drop of anti D in the compartment labeled as anti D. With the help of dropper, add one drop of RBC suspension to each of this antiserum and also one drop in control section. Take precaution that the tip of the dropper should not touch any of the antiserum. Now mix the suspension and the antiserum with the help of stick or toothpick. Use separate stick for each antiserum. After mixing, place the stick in the corresponding quadrant but without touching the contents. This will help you in remembering the sticks used for that particular antiserum. Wait for a minute and then mix the contents again with the same sticks. Observe for agglutination reaction. If you can see the clumps of RBCs in any antiserum, note it down. Otherwise, wait for one more minute. Then mix the contents again and look for agglutination. Alternatively, you can gently rotate the tile. Usually, antigen antibody reaction completes in about 2 to 6 minutes time. As you can observe, in this case, the contents of anti A and anti B are looking homogeneous. While you can clearly see clumps of RBCs in anti D, clumping is due to agglutination reaction. Also, there is no agglutination reaction in control, indicating that the experiment was performed by taking proper precautions. Control also helps to differentiate clumping of RBCs from settling of RBCs. If the reaction is weak, the clumps are very fine and may not be visible to the naked eye. Hence, it's always better to confirm the reaction under the microscope. For this, transfer a small amount of sample from the tile to the glass slide and observe under low power that is 10x objective. If you are using slide method, you can directly place the slides on the microscope and observe. So as you can observe here, these clumps of RBCs indicate presence of agglutination reaction. If RBCs appear as separate cells, as you can see in this slide, reaction is absent, means the particular agglutinogen is absent. Okay, so our observation for the sample is agglutination in neither anti A nor anti B, indicating lack of agglutinogen A as well as agglutinogen B on the RBCs. Hence, the blood group is O. Agglutination reaction in anti D indicates presence of agglutinogen D on the RBCs and hence the blood group is Rh positive. Thus, blood group of this individual is O positive. Let's study few more samples for the practice purpose. So, here is a practice sample number 1. In this slide, you can observe agglutination in anti A and anti D but not in anti B. This indicates that RBCs have agglutinogen A and D. Hence the blood group is A positive. Here is the second sample. Observe carefully and identify the blood group. Yes, agglutination is present in anti A, in anti B as well as in anti D. It means RBCs have agglutinogens A B and D and hence this blood group is A B positive. Now observe both these styles carefully and identify the blood group. Post your answers in the comment section. Okay, as we have come to the end of the session, 
Let's have quick recap of important points. To determine blood group, look for agglutination reaction. Whichever antiserum shows the reaction, the agglutinogen is present on the RBC and hence the same is the blood group. So you can remember this table for identifying the blood groups. Always first observe control for agglutination. Presence of agglutination in control indicates error in the experiment and the results are not reliable. This happens if the dropper touches the antiserum while adding the blood sample or mixing sticks are interchanged. In such cases, discard the sample, clean the tile and repeat the entire procedure following these precautions. Always confirm negative sample by observing under microscope. Complete your observation within 6 minutes because sample dries up and it's difficult to observe agglutination reaction in dried sample. Do not use undiluted blood. It's necessary to maintain optimum ratio of antigen and antibody. Undiluted sample has large quantities of RBCs and it may give you false positive results. So here are some important viva questions on this topic. So with respect to blood group, everyone must know about the Lanstiner's law. Then some other blood group systems, Bombay blood group, erythroblastosis fetalis and its features, significance of blood grouping, cross matching and how it is done and what is its significance, effects of mismatch blood transfusion and preservatives used to store blood in blood banks. So that's all for this session. Thank you for tuning in and see you in the next session. Are you new to my channel? Then please subscribe it and press the bell icon to stay updated about the new releases. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for joining in and see you in the next video.